The whole world wants to get rid of passwords. They're stupid. Use pass keys instead. They're so much better. The big problem I've seen is that most of these implementations tie your pass keys into big tech companies. And that is a fundamental problem. However, pass keys do have a good purpose, and I think that they are good for an alternative and an addition to rather than completely abandoning passwords. Because the big question becomes, what happens when your phone goes kerplunk into the number two drain? And uh, that becomes a fundamental problem. Well, one of my favorite software applications available cross-platform, including over here on Linux, has solved the problem. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Thanks for checking out this video. So today we are going to talk about KeyPass XC, my favorite password manager, implementing pass keys inside of their system. So now if you have a big tech company going, utilize pass keys, we now have a very good option. Now, to be fair, you can actually utilize something like a YubiKey for pass keys. You do want to get a newer one than this. I got my YubiKeys a while ago. And you do want to have a couple of YubiKeys in case you lose one of them. I always recommend get a couple of these, put one of them in your safe, keep one of them as your main production model. And if you lose one, Go ahead and remove that one from all of your logins and replace it and then go back to the secondary one that you have. But it is very important that we have open source and portable and non-big tech versions of pass keys. And that is what we get with the brand new KeyPass XC 2.7.7, which just released earlier this week. And we are going to walk through how to set up a pass key. I'm going to do it on a Joomla site because I can spin those up and uh, just go ahead and uh, uh show you how everything works, and then I can test it over a period of time and make sure that there are no bugs. But I did want to make sure that everybody is aware of this option. Now, of course, as I said in the introduction, I am not a fan of all this ditch, all the passwords things, because the big fundamental problem with pass keys is if you do lose your pass keys, it raises serious concerns about getting back into your individual uh uh, logins and things. And you don't want to have to follow a situation where you have to, you know, give your photo identification to Meta at one hacker away and uh, trust them that they're not going to do anything crazy with it, especially with all of the scams that's going on that they seem to be profiting from. We talked about that in the weekly news roundup last week. But that being said, uh, pass keys can be very good for security. They are in some ways better than a password. However, we do want to make sure that we have a means to save them and transport them. And that is exactly what we have with KeyPass XC. So what I do want to do here is let's go ahead and walk through uh, a number of different changes. And then we're going to dig into the pass key support. So we're going to skip, skip the first part here. Uh, we do have the import options. Uh, so now you have the ability to import from Bitwarden or um, uh, the original version of KeyPass or 1Password. You know, I'm not an advocate of any of these. Even Bitwarden, despite its open source, it still does have all of your passwords on the internet. And I find that to be a frightening prospect. So just be aware of that. I like KeyPass XC because it is radically developed. It is very well maintained and it is adding new features like this we're going to talk about today and it is offline which means that you can be secure that as long as you're utilizing your files correctly you're going to keep them out of the hands of hackers for the most part but we do have new import options if you're on one of the other ones and you want to move on to something a little bit better you can do that they have simplified the unlock screen you just have a variety of different things now it's just here's your password and you have uh if you have a key file now if your password if your uh database is actually locked with a yubi key or some other method you will have that as an option in the screen as well but anything that's not actively being used it hides so that you don't have uh, extra things you might accidentally type something the wrong thing push a wrong button 
Uh, it's just a way to simplify things. So that's really good. They have a couple of other um, improvements. Of course, they do have uh, basic multi-factor authentication support. I did a previous video on that. If you've not seen that, you can go ahead and uh, use KeePass XC for multi-factor authentication. I do want to point out one comment somebody made in that video saying, well, this defeats the purpose of security to have one and to know one. It does not. This just means that you have a, a methodology that you ha you can get in with multi-factor authentication because if your password leaks, the multi-factor is what protects you. That is really what they're trying to say is the thing to get around. But having everything secured inside of your KeePass database, if somebody can get your database, that's already difficult, and then unlock it, that's difficult. Okay, they win. <laughs> Let's give them access. But uh, TOTP does work very well. We do have that in a previous video, so if you've not seen that, I'll go ahead and make sure that it's in the description. And then there's a few other items that they have just making things work a little bit better. There's a full change log. But now let's go ahead into the main feature why you clicked on this video, passkey support inside of KeePass XC. So now we have the ability to manage cast pass keys on any of your individual websites. Now this you works with a conjunction of the KeePass XC application, the database, and the browser extension. So you need to make sure you install and configure the browser extension, and you need to go in and enable pass key support in the browser extension. I'm going to show you how to do that as we set up our test instance here. Now, it is also important to note, and I mention this again when we actually do our test, if you are using YubiKeys in your browser, your browser extension by default is going to bypass that. So you cannot use the YubiKey and KeePass pass keys simultaneously within the browser. But what you can do is you can go in and you can manage individual sites. You can tell sites not to use KeePass XC, or you can tell certain sites to allow certain aspects of KeePass XC to be used, but not others. So those are options that we have inside of the uh, the settings of the browser extension itself. So just be aware of that because our test site, I actually first set it up to work with the YubiKey, and then I went ahead and um, just set it up to use the uh, the KeePass XC pass keys instead as our test. So that is as simple as it is. And from here, we're going to jump on over to a Linux Mint machine where we are using the uh, brand new version of KeePass XC over on a uh, Joomla site to show you how this is going to work. And in theory, it's going to work on any methodology that requires any form of passkey. Utilizing the browser extension is going to trigger to show that, yes, I can use passkeys with this, and we're going to show you how easy it is. So we're over here on Linux Mint, and this is not the latest version. This was my test build that I have not upgraded to the latest version. I have installed KeePass XC with the flat pack, which means that now I have the 277, which is the brand new version. And I have a test site, and we're going to show you how the pass keys work in a test Joomla site that I have here. Now, I have this set up with my uh, YubiKey, but I also have the site set up with the uh, with a password. And the thing is, is when you're using the KeePass XC browser extension, it is going to disable the ability to use the YubiKeys in the browser because it goes to the browser extension. Now, there is actually a spot in there where you can tell it to ignore certain sites. So if you head down here to your manage extension, hit your hamburger menu here and under your preferences, you can come in here and you can enter a site. So let's suppose that we do not want to use a given site. Let's just say for the sake of argument, Google. Let's go ahead and add Google to this. And then we can enable all features. We can new modified credentials. We can auto submit or we can disable all features. So if you want to continue using a YubiKey on a site like Google, go ahead and do that. And this is going to bypass the, uh, the system here. So I'm just going to go ahead and ignore that for now. Now, once you get in here and install your extension, you do have to enable pass keys. This is disabled by default. You have to manually come in here, turn this on, and then once your database is connected into your uh, your KeePass XC and your database is uh, is unlocked, now we can go ahead and head on over to our site and get logged in. Now I do have this set up for 
a Yubi key, but since we have the uh, key pass up here, the Yubi key will not allow us to work. So if I try and log in here, it says, oh, no, no logins found because there's no web authentication. If I were to disable the site and hit web authentication, I could just tap my Yubi key and log in. We'll just go ahead and log in with the password for now. Now what we're going to do to add a pass key, and this is going to apply whatever site needs to use a pass key, just follow their procedures for creating a pass key. In Joomla, you can come down here, type this in. You can see my YubiKey is here. Now I can add multiple ways, so I can have the browser extension working anytime I'm using KeyPass, or if I'm not, I can just go ahead and use my YubiKey and still log in without a password. Of course, I can actually use all of these methods for a multi-factor authentication as well. I'm not worried about that right this second. For the purpose of this, I want to show you the new pass key feature. So just go ahead and add a new authenticator, and you'll see that it gives us this pop-up, and it asks us to register, and we have one minute to do that. Now, it gives us this generic name. I'm going to go ahead and change this to XC, and then so save that. Now, what this is going to do is inside of here, you'll see that we have a new pass key set up and if we head on over to pass keys you see that we have a pass key for our setup here so now we have a way to log in so let's go ahead and close the browser and we will open this guy back up and let's head back to our test site for login purposes and now it says uh, uh, allow selected you can remember so it doesn't doesn't do this every single time hit allow selected log in web authentication and authenticate and this is going to let you on in and so now you can go back under your users and you can see that we have our web authentication is now working and that is as simple as it is now this is really great as I said earlier in the introduction because now we have a way to portably share save backup and cross deploy pass keys without relying on big tech so this is an absolutely amazing feature and close us out and it is going to create some extra entries in here. No big deal. Of course, this is all saved within my database. So all I have to do now is take the same database, deploy it on another machine, install the, uh, the browser. And now I have pass keys enabled on different sites. So that is how easy it is to work with. So there we have it, guys. You can now take that secure database, save it into your backups, deploy it on another machine, and have access to the pass keys on all of your individual websites without relying on saving those pass keys inside of an account or servers on a big tech company like Google or Apple or Microsoft. And this is going to allow you to have very good, solid security and an offline methodology to keep your pass keys secure. So with that guys, thanks for watching. And if you've not already subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and double check that you are subscribed and leave us a like and a comment down below. With that, thank you for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.